We now come to the last example and by far the most advanced cycle which gives uh, optimum efficiency uh, but adds a bit of complication to the steam plant. First, let's read the sum and then study the cycle first in detail before we do the calculations. Now, we are told the steam in example 2, same boiler operating uh, pressure and temperature 500, is expanded isentropically through the high pressure turbine. Now, instead of going to 0.1 bar, we drop to 4 bar to an intermediate pressure. So, looking at the graph of the temperature entropy graph, we see that we drop now from 60 bar to 4 bar. Then there is a process of reheating. Physically, the steam returns to the boiler and there is a special reheater section which reheats the steam, in this case, to 400 degrees. Constant pressure, 400 degrees, before passing through the low pressure turbine to our final pressure of 0.1 bar. We are here. However, a little complication now arises because the passage of the steam from the low pressure turbine has a certain, what we say, isentropic efficiency. I would rather like to call it an inefficiency. Okay, in other words, it only works to 90% and there is a 10% drop in efficiency. As a result, the entropy increases from 4 to 4 prime. It just adds a little bit more complication to our calculations. What we have to do is to recalculate the thermal efficiency and specific steam consumption for the cycle. So, it requires, in our case, a little, a little bit of bouncing back and forth be, uh, between our calculations and the steam table because we have three pressures to contend with. 90 bar, 60 bar, 4 bar, and 0 0.1 bar. So let's get started. At 60 bar and 500, these are data which we obtained from example 2. And we got the entropy. Now, at 4 bar, S1 at 60 bar is equal to 4 bar. Since 1 to 2 is an isentropic process. So, let's examine the steam and prove that, in fact, it is wet because at S2, 6.8802, we clearly can see the steam is very, very close to saturated conditions, but still it is wet. Why? Because saturated steam is now 6.8961. And our steam is 6.88, pretty close, but still wet. So now we go to 4 bar and look up the entropies, knowing that we have S2. Let us go to 4 bar and look up SF and SFG to calculate X2. Okay, now we are at page a4, which is the wet region for steam, at 4 bar, okay, we have highlighted 4 bar, and let's uh, magnify the values for SF 
and SFG and SG. Okay, so our S G as we saw earlier is 6.896 what we are interested is in SFG 5.119 and SF which is 1.777 okay so we got our values here 6.8802 which we have from here our sf 1.777 and sfg crunching it in our calculators again we get 0 0.997 we then now calculate h2 remember h2 is calculated at 4 bar so let's go to 4 bar, wet zone, to retrieve HF and HFG. Okay, now we are back at page A4. Let's retrieve our HF and HFG values at 4 bar. We are here and we are interested in this region. So let's extract it. Okay. And as you can see, what we have is HF, HFG, 605 and 2134. Now let's get back to our calculations. As we see, 605 and 2134 with the dryness fraction that we have computed earlier we get the value of h2 which is 2732.6 kilojoules per kilogram we now press on to get h3 now let's get back to our temperature entropy diagram to see where we are we have got h1 we got h2 now we are reheating the steam at constant pressure we are told to 400 degrees so what we need to do is to go to 4 bar and 400 degrees to read off the enthalpy directly that is getting H3. Okay, we are now at page A6, which is superheat steam condition. Let's find our 4 bar. We scroll down and it's right at the bottom of the page. And in our case, we are looking for 400 degrees. So, 400 degrees, let's uh, isolate it. Okay, and you can see these are the values which we have. What we are interested is in the enthalpy. In our case, the enthalpy is the third row. 3273.4 okay so now let's switch back to our calculation base and we are at 4 bar and superheated 400 degrees for information the saturation temperature is 143.6 degrees centigrade and the steam is superheated and as we have read it at 400 the steam enthalpy is 3273.4 right now 
let's get back to the temperature entropy diagram. We are now having to calculate four using the same technique as from one to two. We can get from three using the fact that the entropy S3 is equal to S4 we will be able to get the value of S4. Okay, so we will go through it quite quickly because it is almost the same as getting the value of H2 from H1. So, this set of calculations, I leave it as an exercise for you. You should be able to tackle this, how we get H4. You notice S4 is equal to S3, and then we read the data of the 0.1 bar, we get 966, 0.966, then we calculate H4, at all these are computed at 0.1 bar. Read the values of very familiar numbers, same as example 2, and we get H4. Now, H5 is saturated water, and we are going to neglect feed pump work as usual. Now comes an interesting part, new thing that we are told that the isentropic efficiency of the low pressure turbine is 0 0.9 using the formula earlier in the theory we need to find h4 prime let's go back to our entropy diagram to have a good look at what is 4 and what is 4 prime As you can see, the steam expands from 3 to 4, not isentropically, but moves to 4 prime, which is a slight increase in entropy, 90%. I would like to call it it's 10% off because of the inefficiency. So how do we compute this? Let's go back. You can see we got H3, we got H4, and we got the isentropic efficiency. You're crunching all this again into our calculator, we'll get H4 prime. So now, the final calculation, the network, there are two works, one from the high-pressure turbine, one from the low-pressure turbine. It's a question of subtraction of the relevant entropies, uh, ent enthalpies, and we get 1,382.3, much higher than example 2, which was around 1,200. But now with the added network, your steam plant now becomes more complicated with a reheater and a second turbine. Now, the next thing is the heat supply. We have to be careful. Not only is it through the boiler, H1 to H6, but also through the reheater between 3 to 2. And the thermal, of the, thermal efficiency now comes to 36.5%. The final calculation for the specific steam consumption is our network divided by, sorry, 3,600 divided by our network, which is 2.6 kilograms of steam needed per kilowatt hour and even more compact. 
plant, but unfortunately more complicated. This ends example two.